course, Jesus isn't speaking about anything upon the face of this earth. He's, it's an analogy, it's a comparison, but as they say, when it comes to talking about God, every analogy limps. In other words, it's, it's not perfect. He talks about a treasure buried in a field or, you know, a pearl of, that's of great worth. You know, you go and sell everything. And I always think about that, that particular passage, you know. So here you go. You sell everything you have to buy this pearl to do what? what are, you gonna, are you gonna eat the pearl? Are you gonna be able to live on it? I mean, no. Um, but what can we count on? What can we live on? The living word of God that you just heard proclaimed on the sacrament of Jesus' most sacred body and most precious blood that you and I will receive. That which sustains us in this life unto, unto eternal life. You know, we hear that passage uh, today from the book of Exodus about Moses' face being so radiant because he, he looked at the face of God. You know, and of course, in the Old Testament said, anybody who would look on God would die. So, but God you know, spared Moses so that he could, they could talk with one another, converse. What is that conversation with you and me? Prayer. Prayer. How many of us pray every day? Huh? Pray for husbands. Pray for children. Pray for mothers and fathers. Pray for those loved ones of ours. Pray for peace in our world. Prayer that you and I can overcome our own weaknesses. Huh? That we might reflect the radiance of God. You know, this past week, uh, the, the moon was shining bright you know, in, the, in the heavens. It was so beautiful. I got up the other night, it was yesterday or the day, night before, and I said, what is shining through me? I thought I left the spotlight on. <laughs> and I opened the shade, and there it was, the beautiful moon. A reflection of what? The sun. And so that's you and me that we're called to be reflections of the Son of God, the goodness and love of Christ Jesus, who is um, one, made one with the Father through the power of the Holy Spirit, but his magnificence, if you will, is reflected in his church. And so you and I come here today and thank the Lord for this church that he has created, built on the blood, sweat, and tears of martyrs and saints, remembering, though, that they weren't always saints. Hmm? They, too, had to, to, to change, to be in the presence of the Lord, conversing with him in their prayers as well, to overcome their own weaknesses, that his glory might shine in them and in their, their thoughts, words, and actions. Sometimes I think we think, you know, we look at them and we say, oh, the saints, but that's so unattainable. No, it's not. You and I have the opportunity to do that right here and now by God's grace. The very fact that you came here today in your ear, listening to the Lord's words huh, in our ears and in our minds and our hearts that we might be converted to Christ, that we in turn may reflect the radiance of Christ in our world. And so whatever we do today, whether that's taking care of little ones at home or whether that's working in our workshops or maybe in our offices or wherever it might be, maybe it's right here in this parish, day in and day out, those folks that are part of our staff that do such a wonderful job, hmm? that we reflect the radiance of Christ in the vocations that God has called us. Husbands, wives, mothers, fathers, priests, single persons, huh? That we, like Moses today in that book of Exodus, huh? Might be radiant. But we won't need veils to cover ourselves. But rather, we allow his goodness and grace to shine forth for all the world to see.